loop reversal right uh, i am not going to go into like too much detail over here i am just going to sort of say that you know intuitively you can sort of see where this might uh, apply right one possible situation once again related to a cache is let's say i have some location in memory right i have this a out here right and i try reading some element from here so coming to loop reversal the idea is that you know you are going to be reading data backwards right you are going in some form like this right and you might have a situation where let's say i read in one value from cache over here and then afterwards i need to go back and then read other values that are coming in from somewhere else okay would this have been better written in the opposite direction for i is equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus you know ai equal to bi plus ci i am basically going to leave it as a question mark right this is something the only thing to keep in mind over here is this is a possibility is there a situation under which due to the way the system interacts with memory and so on this reversed loop might have been better that is something that a compiler can take a call on right it would once again need to know a little bit more details about the kind of architecture the kind of uh, cache structure and so on before it can make such a decision right but it is a possibility which opens up once you consider loop reversal one possible problem that you need to keep in mind is right loop reversal is not always trivial to do for example if i have code like this these two things do completely different operations right so in the first case what is going to happen is i am doing a of i equal to a of i minus 1 right and this is basically what, what is it going to implement it's basically going to implement some kind of a shift register right why am i saying shift register because basically a of n will get the value a of n minus 1 after that a of n minus 1 will get updated to the value a of n minus 2 a of n minus 2 will get updated to the value of a of n minus 3 and so on everything just shifts left by one right instead if i do in the forward direction right i equal to 1 to n then what i'll find is that i'll basically do a of 1 equal to a of 0 after that i'll do a of 2 equal to a of 1 but a of 1 just got the value a of 0 okay so this is just basically a constant copy right and in fact a similar kind of thing happens in the case of you know verilog code and blocking assignments right non blocking assignments take care of this in verilog but blocking assignments will mean again the same thing right when you might have written code thinking that you are trying to implement a shift register what ends up happening is it just copies uh data the same data into all the registers or in fact it will actually eliminate the registers completely in other words the point is that loop reversal is not something that you can just trivially do you need to actually look at what is happening in the code and confirm that it is correct to do it okay loop interchange is something which basically says that i look at these two loops right first i have i and then i have j whereas over here i have j and here i have i inside okay and the question is internally the same exact same function is being called and the question that is being asked is which one is better okay which of these patterns of memory access is better right now where is the memory access coming in this a of ij okay which means that it basically comes down to how is a of ij actually stored in the main memory right a of ij is a two dimensional matrix right but in practice memory is always one dimensional so let's say that a was of size m cross n right right then effectively a of i j is going to be equal to the pointer location a plus i into n plus j okay what that means is 
successive values of j, j equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 are going to get stored in successive memory locations, right? So this basically says that successive j goes to successive memory locations, right? And this is something called a row major way of storing data. Right? One row at a time. I take one row of the matrix, put it in successive memory locations. Then I take the next row of the matrix, put it in successive memory locations and so on. Okay? Is this the only way that I can do it? No. Right? Obviously, I could also have chosen to store it one column at a time. And it turns out that, you know, actually C and Fortran, the two sort of most prominent languages from the point of view of scientific computation, use opposite uh, conventions for this, right? After all, it's just a convention. It's not something which is a hard and fast rule of design, right? So you could have store, uh, stored it either row major or column major. C stores row major, whereas Fortran does column major. If I do row major, then the this one is going to be better. Whereas over here, column major will be better. Right. And this is again something that you need to know, right? When you're writing the code or rather when the compiler is working through it, can I switch the order of the loops and improve the overall performance in terms of how it accesses memory? 